it fascinated me to think that one small shape to could actually produce innumerable things and uh, just one fraction of or one minute input will actually change the complete output when you run it there will be no difference it's like you put you add 0. 0.0001 as a number the you just think that comes out is completely different so this was there at the back of my mind <clears throat> and uh, generally i used to kind of think what is the root of everything i would i'd like to go and look at the root cause of whatever happens rather than sticking at the first level information mm -hmm. or first level cause and try to look for patterns early i get excited that and when i started reading object oriented programming it became more and more easier that if i can get something into the base class then i can do a lot more stuff than repeated thing so so these things kind of came together i don't even know when but these were the different things right in programming you had a base class derived class then there is this mandel brought which can you start with something small but it brings out big then when you look at something big and you keep zeroing in on you find that the root cause at the end of the day happens to be either a loop was not written correctly or the database was not uh, uh, designed properly like that so and it kind of intrigued me to say if we can get the base root class functionality it will be a lot more easier to do different things so this was from a programming perspective and similarly in psychology it kind of struck me that you know the base way in which we think or do is just repeating itself it's just uh, manifesting as different instances uh, if i have to use the object oriented but bottom line it's the base class and then then I, that is when i actually formally started reading about fractals again then i came across the work that oh okay fractal is not just in physics lot of interesting concepts in biology and in physics and in chemistry can be very well explained with fractals and also the other interesting thing is any product which comes out of a fractal is a lot more stable than a randomly assigned uh, or a randomly developed object so if it is fractal based there is a lot of stability to something which is based on fractals the the first fractal that came to me was the questioning right mm. if we learn to question then that can uh, so that was a fractal though it was kind of obvious because in anything and everything unless we don't question there is no way we can do anything different about it so then that led me to what is it that why are in questioning questions revealing what we are because then it struck me that you know we walk away with whatever the first level answer or the second level answer that we get so then i said okay then i thought okay so we got to question till we know something that we didn't know so my commitment to a question is i'll keep questioning till i get to know what i don't know and then it hit upon me that okay so that is that's the bare minimal direction that you can give for somebody ask questions till you know what you don't know it was very simple and i said okay now this seems to be a fractal and this is what you exactly need to do then interestingly at the same time we were taking classes around negotiation and uh, when you talked about egypt and what is non negotiable well, then i figured out hey that is actually doing a cqa they so then when i see movies uh, then i see detective series then i actually see that okay so the guys who were doing it the characters or the movie they basically questioned and they were open till they got something which others didn't know then i said oh okay so looks like a cqa is something which can help you debug a problem or it can actually help in negotiation between two countries as well hmm. okay. so i think Questioning CQA was the first fractal that I had actually hit up. Now that CQA fractal is actually to 
two parts to it. Uh, what I would call as a mindset fractal and a method fractal. So the mindset fractal is curious, right? You, why is that? I can. There's no end to curiosity. So you can be keep on being curious, 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 and then there's really no end to curiosity. Something as simple as um, why is my why does my hand have five fingers? Why not three? Why not six? Right. And then uh, you why is the first finger like this? Why isn't the first finger longer than that? So you can keep on getting curious and that will help you get deeper into a subject. There's no end to that. So that's a mindset is a is a fractal because you can keep getting curious in a repeated recursive kind of a fractal. Then there is the method. Right, the asking the question or doing something that again can be a fractal. You can keep on repeatedly doing something on top of the output that came. So both the mindset and method are fractals in nature. Not all of them, but if you get it, the biggest advantage of a fractal is it just takes you very little time to understand a fractal and practice it for the first time. So the easiest way is if you look at uh, science itself, a triangle is the easiest fractal to practice. Anybody can easily learn. And then when they apply a fractal on top of a fractal, it becomes complicated. You can do it one more time and you keep on doing it repeatedly. You end up with a really complex object. I'll start with an equilateral triangle. Then I'll draw another equilateral triangle on the middle of each side. Pull out the middle and repeat the process, this time with 1, 2, 3, 4 times 3, which is 12 sides. If I do this over and over, the shape will look something like this. This is called a Coke snowflake, and it has a special property. No matter where I look or how much I zoom in, I will see the same pattern over and over. Never-ending patterns like this that on any scale, on any level of zoom, look roughly the same are called fractals. So that's the other power of a fractal. Understanding it and learning it is very easy. You don't need to spend a lot of time. And the beauty of it is the more you practice the fractal, the more scenarios you can see it apply. So let's call it that fractals are a quick return policy on your investment. It gives you very quick returns to the skills that you're learning. Normal skills, it's like you have to spend a lot of time and the return that you get will be less. But the power of a fractal is, I would actually say, Within two hours, you can learn and practice a fractal and get, an, get a return on investment. The presence of anti-fractal was the biggest surprise for me. I was mm. trying to apply fractals and then say it would work. Then I started realizing that the same problems coming in again and again. The anti-fractals are so powerful and it has actually helped you at some point in time that you won't even spot them as anti-fractals. Just like hard coding a value helps us develop programs faster, right? Yeah. So similar to that, there would be things which helped us get success. Mm. Like for me personally, uh, me giving all the specifications to my developers was very successful till I became a, a probably somebody like a senior manager taking care of 100, 120 people. Till then it was all cool because I could give the specs for each and everybody. I will get the output. The moment it became 125, everything fell apart. Mm. Yeah. So and and it's hard for me to accept the fact that you know I am the problem. Me giving specs clearly to every developer is the problem. Mm. It doesn't strike me. I'll blame the developer. I will blame the system. I'll blame the process. I'll blame the interview kind of a thing, telling that people are missing it. So if you take a big event, right? The it's a three day event, for example, you don't want the three day event to fail. Then apply the fractal again. I don't want a day to fail. I don't want a session to fail. I don't want a single talk to fail. And within that, if you look at it, the speaker doesn't want even one slide to be wrong. OK, so if you see it's again the fractal of trying to avoid failures, which works against innovation. So you can be good. But it's hard to become great when you have anti-fractals at play. And a lot of underperformance is because the anti-fractals are very strong.